When one imagines the Sahara, it's often as an endless and inhospitable expanse of shifting sands. But believe it or not, there was once a time when this very desert painted a vastly different picture. Instead of the barren dunes that stretch beyond the horizon today thousands of years ago, this same land was verdant and full of life. Between 10,000 to 5,000 years ago, the Sahara was not a desert in the traditional sense. It was a thriving and lush region, characterized by vast grasslands, teeming with wildlife. Meandering rivers quenched the land and vast lakes shimmered under the sun, serving as focal points of life and civilization. This dramatic transformation from desert to grassland was primarily due to periodic shifts in the Earth's axis and orbit, bringing monsoon rains further north and turning arid landscapes into fertile plains. Humans, always resourceful, quickly took advantage of this bountiful environment. The land supported large communities, leading to the rise of rich cultures and the establishment of intricate trade networks. With water being the primary life source, settlements often sprang up around rivers and lakes. As these communities grew, so did their interactions with neighboring regions, leading to an exchange of goods, ideas and innovations. But like all good things, this green phase was transient. As millennia passed, the Earth's climatic patterns shifted once again, the once abundant rains became sporadic, and the vast bodies of water began to shrink. However, the memories of this era weren't entirely lost. They were etched in the very soil and rocks of the region, waiting to tell their tale to future generations. Delving deeper into the heart of the Green Sahara, one can uncover tales of once prosperous kingdoms and civilizations. Their existence, now buried beneath layers of sand, serves as a testament to the adaptability and ingenuity of ancient peoples. While today's Sahara might seem desolate, the remnants of these kingdoms whisper stories of a time when it was a cradle of life and culture. The Nubians, for example, were a prominent group that once thrived in the region that is now modern-day Sudan. Bordering ancient Egypt, they established a series of powerful kingdoms known for their monumental architecture and art, Far from being isolated, the Nubians had significant interactions with their northern neighbors, trading goods, sharing ideas, and sometimes even clashing in warfare. But what's particularly astonishing is how they flourished in a landscape that would eventually turn against them. Then there's the Garamante civilization, which sprang up in what's now Libya. Instead of massive temples or pyramids, they're best known for their advanced underground irrigation system, Called the Fogaras, these networks of tunnels tapped into underground water tables, bringing life-sustaining water to the surface. Such ingenuity not only underscores their understanding of the environment, but also their determination to harness it. But perhaps one of the most enigmatic and lesser-known civilizations was the Tichit Walata complex in modern-day Mauritania. Here, Settled between the 4th and 2nd millennium BC, people built thousands of stone settlements in a region that today seems completely inhospitable. The remnants of their structures, mainly circular stone walls, tell a story of organized societies with a clear understanding of urban planning. However, as the Sahara's climate began its inexorable shift back to arid conditions, these civilizations faced immense challenges. Water sources dwindled, and once fertile lands turned barren, these environmental changes, combined with external pressures and internal dynamics, led to the decline, migration or transformation of these once great societies. Yet, they weren't completely forgotten. Centuries later, their legacy can still be traced, not just in the physical ruins they left behind, but in the shared cultural and historical tapestry of the regions they once inhabited. To truly comprehend the expanse of human history across the Sahara, one must look to the ancient canvases that dot the landscape, petroglyphs. These are not mere doodles or random etchings, but intricate works of art, revealing the soul of ancient societies and capturing snapshots of life from bygone eras. Found etched into the exposed rock faces, these artworks span vast periods, ranging from the Neolithic era to more recent times. They serve as silent testimonies to the ever-changing environment and human adaptability, the meticulous carvings depict a variety of scenes, from wildlife and hunting escapades to ritual dances and everyday communal activities. Each intricate line and curve, painstakingly carved into the rock, 
tells a story of a time when the Sahara wasn't a vast desert, but a vibrant and lively place. Animals like giraffes, elephants, and antelopes, now only found far south of the Sahara, feature prominently in these petroglyphs. Their depictions are a stark reminder of the green Sahara's lush past. These art pieces tell us about the biodiversity of the region, where grasslands and lakes provided habitats for an array of wildlife and where humans, living amidst nature's bounty, revered and respected their animal counterparts. But beyond showcasing the environment, petroglyphs delve into the realm of spirituality and the metaphysical. There are symbols and patterns whose meanings have been lost to time, leaving us with puzzles waiting to be deciphered. Circles, spirals, and abstract human figures make one wonder about the spiritual beliefs, cosmological views, and mythologies that might have influenced such creations. Were they ritualistic symbols, representations of celestial events, or perhaps communal stories passed down generations? The distribution of these petroglyphs across the Sahara also suggests a connected network of cultures and communities. While some images are unique to specific regions, others exhibit similarities that hint at shared beliefs, trade routes, or intercultural exchanges. In essence, the petroglyphs of the Sahara serve as a bridge. They connect us to the ancients, enabling us to peek into their lives, aspirations, and beliefs. They remind us that beneath the Sahara's sun-baked sands lie stories of perseverance, artistry, and human endeavor, waiting to be rediscovered and appreciated anew. The allure of the lost city of Atlantis has captivated minds for centuries, an advanced civilization that seemingly vanished overnight. But did you know that the Sahara too conceals its own Atlantean secrets? Beneath the ever-shifting dunes and scorched plains, traces of once thriving settlements lay hidden. These aren't mere remnants of small tribes, but of entire civilizations that blossomed amidst the greenery before the unforgiving desert took over. One of the most enigmatic of these lost cities is the ancient city of Taman Raset. Located in today's southern Algeria, Taman Raset was once a bustling hub of trade, art, and academia. Imagine broad avenues lined with intricately designed buildings, public squares where scholars debated the topics of the day, and bustling bazaars displaying goods from across the ancient world. A close to Taman Raset, Archaeological excavations have uncovered remnants of sophisticated irrigation systems. These systems not only suggest a high degree of agricultural expertise, but also attest to the existence of a more hospitable climate. For these irrigation systems to function, there must have been abundant water sources, perhaps even rivers and lakes. Yet what led to the city's decline? Climate change, marked by a shift from regular rainfall to prolonged dry periods, played a major role. As water sources dwindled, sustaining large urban centers like Taman Raset became increasingly challenging. The city's populace facing water scarcity and declining agricultural yields would have been compelled to migrate, seeking more fertile lands. Over time, the unforgiving sands of the Sahara reclaimed the city, obscuring it from human memory. Another hidden jewel of the Sahara is the Nabta Playa, Located in southern Egypt, this site predates the famous Stonehenge. Nabta Playa, believed to be an astronomical observatory, provides evidence that the ancients of the Sahara had a deep understanding of celestial movements. The stones are aligned with particular stellar configurations, possibly helping them mark seasonal changes, essential for nomadic communities dependent on animal husbandry. In a way, the Sahara's own Atlantean cities mirror the overarching human story, one of resilience, adaptability, and a relentless spirit. These cities lost to the annals of time were crafted by civilizations with dreams, aspirations, and an innate desire to understand the world around them. They are a testament to humanity's undying spirit to not just survive, but thrive, even in the most challenging of conditions. And as we unearth these lost cities, we do not just discover stone relics, but stories, cultures and legacies that redefine our understanding of human history. Imagine a Sahara teeming with life, where large lakes dotted the landscape, providing sustenance to diverse ecosystems, a place where verdant grassland stretched as far as the eye could see, and large herds of animals roamed freely. This might seem like a figment of fantasy, but in reality it's a blast from the past.
Several millennia ago, the Sahara was not the barren desert we see today but a thriving green expanse. This vast green Sahara was home to countless species of flora and fauna. It sustained early human civilizations, allowing them to lead settled lives centered around agriculture and fishing. Artifacts like ancient pottery shards and fishing tools found buried beneath the desert sands give credence to this era of abundance. So what transformed this lush paradise into the vast desert that stretches over 10 million square kilometers today? The answer lies in the intricate dance of the Earth's axis and its impact on global climate patterns. Our planet wobbles on its axis, a phenomenon known as axial precession. This wobbling has a cyclic pattern occurring roughly every 26,000 years. As the Earth wobbles, it influences the amount of sunlight reaching different parts of the world, significantly impacting regional climates. Around 10,000 years ago, during one such wobble, the Sahara received increased sunlight, resulting in intensified monsoon rains that turned the arid region into a verdant oasis. However, the dance continued. As the cycle of axial precession progressed, sunlight reaching the Sahara gradually reduced, the once torrential rains became infrequent, and the large lakes that had been the lifeline for so many began to dry up. The vegetation that thrived under the generous rains found it hard to survive. Grasslands receded, giving way to expanding sands. As the green faded, Animals and people migrated to more hospitable regions or adapted to the emerging arid environment. The transformation from green to barren didn't happen overnight. It was a gradual process unfolding over several millennia. As the landscape transformed, so did the civilizations that called it home. They adapted, innovated and sometimes relocated, continually molding their lives according to the capricious whims of nature. In the end, the Sahara's story of desertification is not just a tale of climate shifts, but also a testament to nature's ever-changing canvas and humanity's age-old struggle and resilience against the relentless march of time and change. The annals of archaeology are filled with discoveries that ignite the imagination, challenge conventional wisdom, and even stir controversy. From the mysterious undeciphered Voynich manuscript to the mysterious formations of the Bosnian pyramids, the world is filled with relics and artifacts that defy easy explanation. These top 10 most controversial archaeological discoveries invite us on a thrilling journey through time, unraveling secrets, exploring ancient civilizations, and confronting puzzles that continue to baffle even the most seasoned experts. As we delve into these captivating mysteries, we may find ourselves questioning what we thought we knew about our past and pondering the uncharted territories of human history and ingenuity. Göbekli Tepe, situated in southeastern Turkey, stands as one of the most mysterious archaeological sites on the planet. Dating back to the 10th millennium BCE, it challenges the traditional view of early human civilization. The site consists of numerous massive stone pillars, some weighing up to 10 tons, arranged in a series of circular formations. These megalithic pillars are intricately carved with reliefs of various animals and abstract symbols. What's truly perplexing is the level of architectural sophistication demonstrated, including precise stone shaping and 3D reliefs. The timing of Gobekli Tepe's construction places it within the Upper Paleolithic era, a time when humans were largely considered hunter-gatherers without the means to settle down and build monumental structures. This paradox questions our understanding of human evolution and social organization. The purpose of Gobekli Tepe remains a mystery, some researchers believe it was a religious sanctuary or ceremonial site, while others theorize it could have served astronomical functions. Its symbolic artistry hints at a complex belief system, possibly a precursor to later mythologies. Excavation at Gobekli Tepe continues to yield new information, keeping archaeologists and historians on their toes. The more we learn, the more we realize how little we know about this ancient and advanced civilization. Discovered in a shipwreck off the coast of the Greek island Antikythera, this ancient device has been termed the world's first analog computer. Dating back to the 2nd century BCE, it's an artifact that highlights the astonishing technological prowess of the ancient Greeks. The Antikythera mechanism is a series of over 30 intricate bronze gears housed in a wooden frame. These gears interact with each other in a complex manner, driven by a hand-turned knob. This mechanism was used to predict astronomical positions, phases of the moon, eclipses, 
and even the dates of the ancient Olympic Games. Its complex gear ratios allowed for remarkable precision in tracking the movements of celestial bodies, rivaling modern-day astronomical calculations. The Antikythera mechanism has had a profound impact on our understanding of ancient technology and engineering. Its discovery prompted further research into ancient Greek science, leading to the recognition of their advanced understanding of mathematics and mechanics. Modern-day scientists have attempted to reconstruct the Antikythera mechanism, deepening our appreciation for this ancient marvel. Ongoing analysis, including X-ray studies, has unveiled hidden inscriptions and finer details, allowing researchers to continually refine their understanding of its function and complexity. The Baghdad Battery, also known as the Parthian Battery, is a set of artifacts discovered in modern-day Iraq. Thought to date back to the Parthian period, 250 BCE to 250 CE, this discovery challenges our understanding of early electrical technology. Each battery consists of a ceramic pot, a copper cylinder, and a rod of iron. When the components are assembled and an electrolytic solution is added, such as lemon juice or vinegar, the device appears to function similarly to a galvanic cell. The purpose of the Baghdad battery remains a subject of debate. Some scholars argue that it may have been used for electroplating precious metals onto objects, while others believe it could have had a ceremonial or religious function. The idea that ancient people possessed knowledge of electricity is both fascinating and controversial. Though some experiments have replicated the batteries designed to produce a small electric current, skeptics argue that the artifacts may have had a more mundane purpose, such as storing sacred scrolls. The true nature of the Baghdad battery continues to be a puzzle in archaeology. Located in the Nazca Desert of southern Peru, the Nazca lines are a series of enormous geoglyphs etched into the ground, comprising over 800 straight lines, 300 geometric figures, and 70 animal and plant designs. These mysterious shapes have captured the world's imagination. The lines were created by removing the reddish surface stones to reveal the lighter ground beneath. Due to the arid and stable climate of the region, the lines have remained mostly intact for centuries, with some dating back to 500 BCE. The function of the Nazca lines is still debated among researchers. Some theories suggest that they were part of an astronomical calendar or a means to communicate with deities. Others posit that they served as ritual paths or markers for water sources. The sheer scale and precision of the Nazca lines have led some to speculate about extraterrestrial involvement. This idea, though largely dismissed by mainstream archaeologists, has fueled many conspiracy theories and added to the mystique of the lines. The Shroud of Turin is one of the most famous and controversial relics in Christian history. Believed by some to be the burial cloth of Jesus Christ, this ancient linen cloth bears the faint image of a man who appears to have suffered physical trauma consistent with crucifixion. The shroud measures approximately 14.3 by 3.7 feet and displays a front and back image of a bearded man with wounds to his wrists, feet, side and head. Many believe these wounds align with the biblical description of Jesus' crucifixion. The shroud's provenance is debated, with historical records tracing it back to the 14th century in France. Critics argue this timing is inconsistent with the shroud's supposed origin. And in 1988, radiocarbon dating placed it between 1260 and 1390 CE, fueling skepticism about its authenticity. Though the radiocarbon dating seemed to debunk the shroud's origin, subsequent research has raised questions about the sample's contamination, possibly skewing the results. The unique 3D characteristics of the image and the lack of known artistic methods to replicate it add to the mystery. The Great Sphinx of Giza is one of the world's most iconic monuments, yet it hides many secrets. One controversial theory is the Sphinx water erosion hypothesis, which argues that the monument's weathering patterns indicate a much older origin than traditionally believed. The body of the Sphinx exhibits significant erosion, especially on its western enclosure wall. This erosion appears to be caused by water, leading some researchers to propose that the Sphinx may have been exposed to heavy rainfall thousands of years ago. Mainstream Egyptology dates the Sphinx to the reign of Pharaoh Khafre, around 2500 BCE. The arid climate of the region during that period seems inconsistent with the water erosion observed. Proponents of the water erosion hypothesis, such as geologist Robert Schock, 
argue that the Sphinx may date back to a much earlier period, possibly as far back as 10,000 BCE. This would align with a time when the region experienced more substantial rainfall. If the water erosion hypothesis were proven true, it would dramatically alter our understanding of ancient Egyptian civilization and its chronology. The idea that such an advanced monument could have been built thousands of years earlier challenges conventional wisdom. Many Egyptologists and geologists have criticized the water erosion hypothesis, arguing that the observed weathering could be the result of wind, salt, and other environmental factors, rather than water. The lack of corresponding evidence in other nearby monuments adds to the skepticism. The crystal skulls are a collection of human skull-shaped carvings made from clear or milky quartz crystal. They have become the subject of intrigue, skepticism, and fascination, with many attributing them to ancient Mesoamerican civilizations, while others consider them to be modern fabrications. The most famous of the crystal skulls is the Mitchell Hedges skull, discovered in the 1920s and characterized by a high level of detail and craftsmanship. The skulls vary in size and are often associated with mystical properties and healing powers. Some proponents claim that the crystal skulls are pre-Columbian artifacts, possibly created by the ancient Maya or Aztec civilizations. They are said to contain hidden wisdom and knowledge and legends abound of their supernatural powers. The Dropa Stones are another mysterious archaeological discovery that has stirred controversy and speculation. Allegedly found in the caves of the Bayanha Mountains in China in 1938, these circular disks are said to contain tiny hieroglyphs and strange inscriptions. Each drop of stone is said to measure about 12 inches in diameter with a hole in the center. The stones are reportedly inscribed with spiraling grooves containing minute carvings resembling a phonograph record. A sensational story accompanies the dropper stones linking them to the dropper people, a supposed ancient tribe of unknown origin. Some accounts even connect the stones to extraterrestrial visitors, claiming that the inscriptions tell of a spacecraft's crash landing on Earth. Research into the authenticity and origin of the dropper stones has been hindered by a lack of tangible evidence. Many of the initial claims regarding the stones and their discovery have been challenged, and no original stones are available for study. The Voynich Manuscript is an enigmatic handwritten book, penned in an unknown script and filled with illustrations of plants, astronomical diagrams and mysterious symbols. Named after Wilfred Voynich, a book dealer who purchased it in 1912, its origin, authorship and purpose remain unclear to this day. The manuscript consists of 240 pages, filled with intricate drawings and writings in an indecipherable language. The illustrations suggest that the book may be divided into sections, including herbal, astronomical, biological, cosmological and pharmaceutical parts. Numerous cryptographers, historians and linguists have attempted to decode the Voynich manuscript, but all efforts have been in vain. The text defies traditional analysis and no coherent meaning has been extracted from it. Some even theorize that the text may be meaningless or a sophisticated hoax, Various theories have arisen about the manuscript, including the possibility that it's a medical alchemical text or an encoded version of a known language. Others suggest that it may be a work of art or a creation of an imaginative mind. The Bosnian pyramids located near the town of Visoko in Bosnia and Herzegovina are a series of geological formations that have sparked controversy since their discovery in 2005. Simir Osmanagic, who first promoted the site, claims that these are the oldest man-made pyramids on Earth. The site consists of several pyramid-shaped hills, including the Pyramid of the Sun, the Pyramid of the Moon, and the Pyramid of the Dragon. Proponents argue that the hills were shaped by an ancient civilization into pyramids with evidence of tunnels, stone blocks, and terraces. Many archaeologists and geologists have criticized the claim that these are man-made structures. They argue that the hills are natural formations known as flat irons and that the evidence presented lacks scientific rigor. Regardless of the controversy, the Bosnian pyramids have become a popular tourist attraction. Many visitors are drawn by the mystical allure of the site and the possibility of uncovering a lost civilization. The Sahara Desert, an unfathomable expanse of sand, heat and mystery. Spanning over 9 million square kilometers, this vast desert is the largest hot desert in the world. But what is really hiding beneath its sandy surface? Let's explore the secrets and mysteries of the Sahara Desert. 
The Sahara Desert, now a vast inhospitable sea of sand, was once a thriving landscape of verdant savannas and abundant water bodies. The ancient communities that inhabited these fertile regions flourished in rich cultures, establishing cities, trade routes and centers of learning. But as climate changed and the region became arid, the green Sahara transitioned into a harsh desert, engulfing everything in its path. What might have happened to those ancient civilizations that once thrived there? The possibility of lost cities hidden beneath the Sahara's sands has fascinated archaeologists and adventurers for centuries. One notable example is the lost city of Uba, referred to in ancient texts as the Atlantis of the Sands. Legend has it that Uba was a thriving trading hub, rich in frankincense, but it suddenly vanished, possibly consumed by a massive sandstorm or swallowed by a sinkhole. Expeditions have been conducted to uncover Uba, and satellite imagery has revealed some tantalizing hints, but the city remains elusive. In the northern reaches of the Sahara, the Garamanti civilization, known for its advanced underground irrigation systems known as Fagaras, has left behind traces of a complex society. Excavations have unearthed impressive ruins and artifacts, suggesting that there may be more buried beneath the endless dunes. The sands of the Sahara have also concealed pre-Islamic Berber structures, like the circular stone tombs called Bazinas. These architectural remnants might indicate the presence of lost cities or settlements that were part of an intricate trade network. Discovering these lost cities could rewrite our understanding of African history, revealing new insights into human civilization and cultural evolution. These buried treasures continue to lure explorers, promising a glimpse into a world that time forgot, right in the heart of one of the most mysterious and captivating places on Earth. The Sahara's secrets are still waiting to be uncovered, and the search for lost cities and ancient civilizations remains a thrilling quest, fraught with challenges and filled with potential. The Sahara Desert, the world's largest hot desert, is often perceived as a dry, lifeless wasteland. But beneath its parched surface lies a world teeming with hidden wonders. Among these are underground rivers and lakes, natural phenomena that could be key to understanding both the Sahara's past and its future. Millions of years ago, the Sahara was a far more hospitable place with lush green landscapes fed by rivers and lakes. As the climate changed, the desertification process began and water sources started to dry up. But not all was lost. Some of the water retreated underground, forming hidden aquifers and subterranean rivers. These concealed water bodies have recently gained attention due to their potential significance in scientific research, agriculture and human habitation. One such discovery is the Nubian Sandstone Aquifer System, one of the largest known fossil water aquifers in the world. Spanning four countries and containing more than 150,000 cubic kilometers of water, this ancient reservoir dates back to the last wet period of the Sahara, around 5,000 to 15,000 years ago. In Libya, the Great Man-Made River project tapped into these deep aquifers to provide water to populated coastal areas. A marvel of modern engineering, the project illustrates how these underground water sources could be key to the region's future sustainability. Furthermore, the presence of these hidden rivers and lakes has given rise to unique ecosystems, harboring species that have adapted to an underground existence. Exploring these habitats can provide insights into life in extreme environments and may have implications for the search for life on other planets. These underground bodies also hold clues to the Sahara's climatic history, with sediment and mineral deposits acting as a natural record of environmental changes. Understanding these changes could contribute to broader climate studies, helping scientists predict future climatic patterns in the region and worldwide. But there are also risks. Unregulated exploitation of these resources can lead to ecological imbalances and degradation of the fragile desert ecosystem. Preserving these hidden treasures while responsibly utilizing them presents a complex challenge. Intriguingly, some have even speculated about the existence of mythical underground oases and hidden civilizations thriving beneath the desert surface, though these remain the stuff of legend. The Eye of the Sahara, or the Richat structure, is a geological marvel that captures the imagination and intrigue of scientists, historians and conspiracy theorists alike. Located in Mauritania, this enormous circular feature stretches 40 kilometers in diameter, making it easily visible from space. 
Originally, scientists thought that the eye of the Sahara was the result of a meteor impact, but further study revealed that it was actually a deeply eroded geologic dome. This complex structure consists of concentric rings of rocks, some of which are more than 600 million years old. These rings are made of varying types of rock, including quartzite, limestone and shale, which erode at different rates, giving the formation its striking appearance. The genesis of the Rishat structure is still not entirely clear, with theories ranging from volcanic activity to multiple stages of erosion. What is known is that it provides a unique window into the Earth's geologic history. The exposed layers offer insights into the processes that shaped the region, from ancient marine environments to tectonic forces. Geologists view it as a natural laboratory, allowing them to study various rock types and geologic features in one concentrated area. But the eye of the Sahara's intrigue extends beyond geology. Some have proposed that it bears a striking resemblance to the description of the lost city of Atlantis. As described by the ancient philosopher Plato, this theory has fueled speculation and even some expeditions to explore the site further, searching for hidden clues to one of history's most enduring mysteries. The Reichert structure's unique appearance has also attracted attention from space agencies such as NASA. The mineral compositions and geology are considered analogous to certain areas on Mars. Scientists study the eye to better understand similar structures on the Red Planet, enhancing our knowledge of interplanetary geology. The local population has its own stories and legends about the formation, adding a rich cultural dimension to its scientific fascination. Tourism has also started to blossom in the area, attracting those curious to see this spectacular natural wonder up close. The vast, unforgiving expanse of the Sahara Desert has long been a place of mystery and isolation, making it an ideal location for secret military bases. Governments and various military organizations have been rumored to utilize the remote, inhospitable terrain for hidden installations, research facilities and testing grounds. During the Cold War, both superpowers were allegedly engaged in establishing covert bases in the Sahara capitalizing on the region's strategic location and natural concealment. The secrecy surrounding these sites has fueled countless conspiracy theories and speculations about what truly transpires within their guarded perimeters. In some cases, declassified documents have revealed the existence of secret bases used for nuclear testing. The French government, for example, conducted a series of nuclear tests in the Algerian Sahara during the 1960s. These tests were highly controversial and shrouded in secrecy, with their consequences still being felt by local populations today. Some believe that the Sahara's remote areas are also utilized for testing advanced aircraft, weapons and even experimental technologies. Satellite imagery and eyewitness accounts have occasionally pointed to unusual activities in the desert, further adding to the enigma. The lack of access to many of these areas, coupled with strict governmental controls, means that substantiating these claims remains a formidable challenge. Another dimension to the story of secret bases in the Sahara is the potential collaboration between governments and private military companies. The region's ongoing political instability and strategic importance have led to the proliferation of private military contractors operating in the shadows. Some argue that secret bases might serve as launching pads for covert operations, intelligence gathering, and even as detention facilities. The idea of secret military bases in the Sahara also intertwines with local folklore and popular culture. Tales of mysterious lights, unexplained sounds, and encounters with unidentified aircraft have become part of the desert's lore, inspiring novels, films, and documentaries. The Sahara Desert, with its vast, unexplored landscapes, has long been a treasure trove for paleontologists and fossil enthusiasts. Hidden beneath its shifting sands lie remnants of an ancient world where prehistoric creatures once roamed. The desert's geological history has created unique conditions for the preservation of fossils, including those of dinosaurs, making it a significant location for scientific discoveries. The region's prehistoric secrets began to be unveiled in the early 20th century, with expeditions uncovering dinosaur bones, including the famous Spinosaurus, a gigantic, carnivorous dinosaur that once stalked North Africa. The Saharan rocks have also revealed various other species, from flying reptiles to ancient crocodiles, painting a rich picture of a vibrant ecosystem that existed millions of years ago. 
Perhaps one of the most astonishing findings in the Sahara is the dinosaur graveyard at Gadufawa in Niger. This site has provided some of the best preserved skeletons of the Cretaceous period, including those of the long-necked Nigosaurus and the predatory Suchamimus. Researchers believe that these graveyards were created by cataclysmic events such as droughts or floods, trapping and preserving the remains of entire communities of prehistoric animals. The discoveries in the Sahara have not been limited to dinosaurs alone. Fossils of early human ancestors, prehistoric mammals and ancient marine life have also been unearthed. These findings have shed light on the evolutionary history of the African continent and have even challenged prevailing theories about the development of life on Earth. Despite these remarkable discoveries, the Sahara's vastness and harsh conditions have made exploration and excavation a challenging task. Many areas remain untouched, and the shifting sands constantly conceal and reveal new secrets. Political instability and lack of funding have also hampered research efforts in some regions. In popular culture, the Sahara's prehistoric fossils and dinosaur graveyards have ignited imaginations, giving rise to legends and tales of lost worlds waiting to be rediscovered. They serve as a reminder of the Earth's dynamic and ever-changing nature, where entire landscapes can be transformed and giants of the past can be hidden beneath a sea of sand. The scientific and historical significance of the Sahara's fossil sites cannot be overstated. They are not merely relics of the past, but living connections to a time long gone, allowing us to understand our planet's history and the complex web of life that has shaped it. As we continue to delve into the Sahara's ancient mysteries, we are likely to uncover even more astonishing insights into the story of life on Earth. Whether for the professional scientist or the curious traveler, the Sahara's prehistoric landscapes offer a window into a world that has long vanished, but continues to fascinate and inspire. When you look at the vast and timeless desert of Egypt, the word Kemet might not immediately come to mind. Yet this term, which means black land in the ancient Egyptian language, was once used to describe this area, highlighting the fertile soil along the banks of the Nile River, the lifeblood of the civilization we know today as ancient Egypt. But were the Kemites merely skilled farmers and pyramid builders, or was there more to them? Could there possibly be connections to other worldly beings? The term Kemites stems from Kemet, which translates to the black land in the ancient Egyptian language. This phrase illustrates the contrast between the fertile black soil of the Nile River's banks and the harsh surrounding desert, often referred to as Deshret or the red land. However, the term Kemet signifies far more than a geographical landscape. It represented a civilization that was one of the most enduring and influential in human history. The people of Kemet, the Kemetes, constructed a culture that has contributed a great deal to the world in various fields such as architecture, mathematics, science, and art. The Kemites were builders of an incredible magnitude. They are known for the creation of the pyramids, grand burial structures for their pharaohs, and the Sphinx, one of the most iconic monuments worldwide. The sheer precision and scale of these constructions are an enduring testament to their engineering prowess and architectural ingenuity. They were also highly sophisticated in their administrative systems, maintaining detailed records of their pharaohs, political affairs and religious rituals. These have been crucial in enabling us to piece together the history and societal structure of Kemet. The religion of the Kemites was intricately woven into every aspect of their daily life, they had a polytheistic belief system with a pantheon of gods and goddesses, each overseeing different aspects of life and nature. These religious beliefs not only guided their moral code, but also played a significant role in their understanding of the world, life, death and the afterlife. In the realm of art, Kemets were masterful. Their sculptures, paintings and pottery were not only beautiful, but also carried significant symbolic meaning. These artifacts provide a window into their values, beliefs and everyday life, contributing to our understanding of this extraordinary civilization. The association between the Kemites and extraterrestrial theories mainly originates from their incredible achievements in construction, astronomy and science that appear to far surpass what would have been achievable with the technology thought to be available to them. This includes, most notably, 
the construction of the Pyramids of Giza and the Sphinx, which showcase an astounding level of precision and understanding of complex mathematics and engineering. One element of this theory focuses on the construction of the pyramids, specifically the Great Pyramid of Giza, the pyramid's alignment with the magnetic North Pole, the precise dimensions and ratios correlating with complex mathematics and astronomical phenomena, and the extraordinary undertaking of constructing such a monument with huge stones, all have led some to question whether the Kemites had help from technologically advanced extraterrestrial beings. Moreover, the precise alignment of the pyramids of Giza with the stars in the belt of Orion has also been used as evidence for this theory. This alignment, along with various other astronomical alignments found in their architecture and art, suggests a deep understanding of the cosmos that seems uncannily advanced for the time. Another aspect of Kemet's civilization that feeds into this theory is their mythology and religious beliefs. Ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs and artwork are full of references to sky gods, powerful beings who descended from the stars and strange objects seen in the sky, Proponents of the ancient astronaut theory suggest that these are not myths or symbols, but literal depictions of extraterrestrial visitors. It's worth noting, however, that these theories often come under scrutiny. Many scholars argue that these theories underestimate the ingenuity, intelligence and skills of ancient human civilizations. They point out that with an understanding of simple machines, human labor and time, the Kemites could have achieved these remarkable constructions on their own. Whether or not the Kemites had extraterrestrial help is a matter of personal belief. What is undeniable is the awe-inspiring and influential legacy that Kemet civilization has left behind. Now, diving into the advanced knowledge of the Kemites. Now, this is where things get really interesting. The civilization of Kemet was notably advanced for its time, with numerous achievements in various fields such as astronomy, mathematics, architecture and medicine. Firstly, the Kemites were skilled astronomers. Their understanding of celestial bodies was so profound that they were able to develop a calendar that is almost as accurate as the one we use today. Based on the movements of the sun, moon and stars, they formulated a 365-day calendar divided into 12 months. This marked a significant leap in the understanding of timekeeping. Moreover, they developed complex mathematical concepts including fractions and geometric principles which allowed them to create stunning architectural masterpieces such as the pyramids. They understood principles of engineering, physics and geometry that wouldn't be rediscovered until thousands of years later. In the field of medicine, Kemites demonstrated advanced knowledge too. Papyrus scripts reveal they had knowledge of human anatomy, surgical procedures and even remedies for various ailments. The medical practices were so developed that some even argue they carried out complex procedures like brain surgery. The complexity of these achievements has led some to speculate about a possible extraterrestrial influence. Could such a civilization have gained such advanced knowledge on their own? Or was there external help involved? Theories propose that the Kemites could have had contact with an alien civilization that shared their knowledge with them, sparking the rapid development of their society. But of course, this is all conjecture and the debate continues. Now let's plunge head first into one of the most enduring mysteries of the Kemites, the Pyramids. The Pyramids of Egypt, built by the Kemites, are one of the most recognizable and enigmatic structures of the ancient world. The most famous of them, the Great Pyramid of Giza, is a marvel of engineering and precision that even modern technology struggles to replicate. This Great Pyramid is estimated to consist of over 2.3 million blocks of stone, each weighing an average of 2.5 tons and some even up to 15 tons. The precision of its construction is staggering. Its base is level to within just 2.1 centimeters and the sides are oriented to the cardinal directions within three arc minutes. The construction methodology behind such a mammoth task is an enduring mystery. Several theories have been proposed about how these structures were built, from simple manual labor to complex machines and even supernatural or alien assistance. One of the most prevalent theories is that the Kemites constructed a spiraling ramp to haul the massive stones to the required heights. However, the sheer logistics of such a venture in terms of workforce, resources and time make this theory a subject of debate. More fringe theories have posited that the Kemites had access to advanced technology, 
perhaps even extraterrestrial. These theories often point to the precision and alignment of the pyramids with celestial bodies, a task that would seemingly require a more advanced understanding of mathematics and astronomy than was available at the time. One of the most fascinating elements of Kemet's rich culture is its art. This isn't simply due to its aesthetic appeal, but more intriguingly, the narratives and depictions that the art encompasses. The Kemetic art includes a wide range of expressive forms, from sculpture and architecture to relief and pottery, and of course the remarkable hieroglyphic writing system. Looking closer at the artwork, some researchers and theorists have pointed out representations that could potentially denote alien encounters. This is a contentious interpretation and is not universally accepted by historians or Egyptologists, but it certainly makes for a compelling discussion. Among the most cited pieces are the relief depictions found in the Temple of Siti, once in Abydos. This particular relief has stirred controversy as it seems to show objects resembling modern-day helicopters, submarines and even spaceships. How could this be? given that these technologies wouldn't exist for thousands of years after the relief was created. Then there are the depictions of the gods themselves. Many of them, like the sky god Horus, who is represented as a man with the head of a falcon, and the god Ra, who is frequently portrayed traveling through the sky in a sunboat, are theorized by some to symbolize extraterrestrial beings. Critics argue these interpretations are merely a result of pareidolia, the human tendency to perceive meaningful patterns where none actually exist. However, proponents of the alien theory believe that these peculiarities are too significant to dismiss as coincidence. What's clear is that Kemetic art laden with its mystical symbols and cryptic depictions is still a fertile ground for exploration and interpretation. While the Kemetic civilization's feats of engineering, medicine and astronomy were truly remarkable, some believe the alien connection theories are a step too far, an overly speculative leap that discounts the achievements of the ancient Kimites themselves. In this segment, we delve into the skepticism and the rational view of these theories. Firstly, it's important to acknowledge that correlation does not imply causation. Yes, there are intriguing overlaps between some ancient Egyptian depictions and what we might interpret as UFOs or alien figures today. But this doesn't necessarily mean that aliens were involved. After all, to the untrained eye, a cloud can resemble a dragon or a castle. But this doesn't make it so. Many experts and historians argue that interpreting the gods and hieroglyphs as aliens or UFOs is a form of cultural reductionism, simplifying complex, symbolic artwork into an anachronistic, literal interpretation. Egyptologists point out that hieroglyphs were highly stylized, symbolic and sacred, often representing ideas or concepts rather than physical entities. The advanced knowledge demonstrated by the Kemites, while certainly impressive, may be more a testament to their sophisticated understanding of mathematics, astronomy and engineering rather than alien intervention. Remember, the Kemites were one of the longest lasting civilizations in human history, giving them ample time to develop and refine their knowledge. Finally, there's the issue of Occam's razor, the principle that the simplest explanation is usually the best one. In this case, the simpler explanation is that the Kemites, through hundreds of years of intellectual pursuit, achieved their advancements on their own. While the idea of ancient alien visitations is an exciting theory, it adds a layer of complexity and speculation that isn't necessarily supported by hard evidence. So were the Kemites, the people of the Black Land, the benefactors of alien knowledge? Or were they simply skilled artisans, scientists and builders who utilized their understanding of the world around them to create one of the most enduring and fascinating civilizations in human history? Like the Sphinx, the answer remains enigmatic, silently gazing out into the sands of time. But one thing's for sure, the legacy of the Kamites, whether divinely, extraterrestrially or humanly inspired, continues to captivate us and will likely do so for many millennia to come. Picture the grandeur of ancient Egypt, mighty pharaohs, the majestic sphinx, and of course, the awe-inspiring pyramids. Now, take a leap through time to the Roman Empire, famous for its innovative engineering and renowned military conquests. But what if I told you that these two mighty civilizations are more intertwined than you'd ever imagined? What if the pyramids, one of the ancient world's greatest wonders, held a fascinating chapter in the narrative of Roman expansion? Yes, that's right. 
today we'll dive into the dramatic shift from the pharaonic era of Egypt to its time under Roman rule and unravel the influence of the Romans on Egypt's most iconic structures. To appreciate the magnitude of change that the end of the pharaoh's era marked, we must first understand the incredible influence and grandeur of the ancient Egyptian civilization. Spanning over 3,000 years, the era of the pharaohs was marked by a series of ruling dynasties, each leaving its mark on the land of the Nile. From the Old Kingdom era, when the pyramids were constructed, to the Middle and New Kingdoms, when Egypt expanded its influence through military campaigns and trade, the civilization thrived, prospered and demonstrated its resilience in the face of historical turmoil. And at the heart of it all were the pharaohs, the god kings of Egypt, the intermediaries between the gods and the people. Through an intricate, deeply spiritual system of governance, these rulers commanded the respect and devotion of their subjects, ensuring the continuity of their civilization. However, the arrival of Alexander the Great in 332 BC marked a significant turning point. The Ptolemaic dynasty that he established was Hellenistic in nature, marking the beginning of the end of pharaonic rule. Cleopatra VII, the last pharaoh, was a symbol of this fusion of Greek and Egyptian cultures. Her intelligence, charisma and strategic alliances with Roman leaders Julius Caesar and Mark Antony made her a significant historical figure. Yet her reign was fraught with political challenges and personal tragedies. When she famously took her life in 30 BC, the age of the pharaohs effectively ended. The Egypt that Cleopatra left behind was an empire on the precipice of profound change. This period marked the end of Egypt's independence and the beginning of a new era under the control of a burgeoning empire. Rome. Now, as we move into the Roman conquest of Egypt, we find ourselves navigating a series of strategic moves and political intrigues. With the death of Cleopatra, the land of the Nile was effectively annexed by Rome and turned into a province under the control of Octavian, who would later be known as Augustus, the first emperor of Rome. But why was Egypt so attractive to the Romans? The reasons were primarily economic and strategic. Egypt was the breadbasket of the Mediterranean. Its fertile lands, nourished by the annual flooding of the Nile, yielded crops that fed the Roman populace and fueled its armies. Plus, it was a gateway to the riches of Africa and the Near East. Roman control of Egypt marked a significant shift in power dynamics, as it was the first time Egypt had been ruled by a foreign power. Yet even as the Romans wielded their influence, they couldn't ignore the deep cultural and religious roots of the Egyptians. They adopted some of the local gods, including Isis and even the tradition of pharaohs to an extent. The Roman emperors, like the pharaohs before them, projected themselves as godlike figures, often adorning themselves in traditional Egyptian garb in statues and reliefs. Still, as they maintained this facade of cultural integration, the Romans also pursued their own interests. One such interest, intriguingly, might have been the mysterious and awe-inspiring structures dotting the Egyptian landscape, the pyramids. So what did it really mean to be Egypt under Roman rule? And while there was certainly cultural assimilation as Romans adopted Egyptian gods and traditions, Egypt also became a Roman province. This meant taxation and Egypt was heavily taxed. The fertile Nile Delta was a treasure trove producing grain, papyrus and precious gems, all of which found their way into Roman coffers. Yet even as the riches of Egypt fueled the Roman Empire, there were also periods of unrest. The Egyptian populace, after centuries of being ruled by god kings, now found themselves subjects of a distant emperor and Roman bureaucrats who were more interested in wealth extraction than in the preservation of the ancient Egyptian culture. The impact of the Roman rule on the Egyptian landscape was also significant. Roman architecture began to sprout across Egypt, from the coastal city of Alexandria to the southern city of Aswan. Temples to Roman gods were constructed alongside ancient Egyptian temples, and Roman-styled villas were built alongside traditional Egyptian homes. The juxtaposition of these two distinct architectural styles showcases the collision of two powerful civilizations. In the midst of this cultural and architectural synthesis, the pyramids stood timeless. What the Romans thought of these ancient structures and how they interacted with them is a question that delves deep into the realm of speculation. A curiosity that tickles our imagination, the pyramids, timeless behemoths of stone, their grandeur a testament to a civilization's past glory. But when the Romans first laid their eyes on them, what did they think? What did they do? 
We know from various accounts that the Romans, like the Greeks before them, were fascinated by the pyramids, their size, their age, their engineering. Everything about them was a wonder. Some Roman writers, such as Pliny the Elder, wrote extensively about them. Pliny, in his natural history, called them an idle and foolish exhibition of royal wealth, but his detailed descriptions betray a fascination with their complexity and longevity. But did the Romans ever venture inside? Were they, as some believe, the last people to raid the pyramids for their treasure? Archaeological evidence suggests that by the time the Romans arrived in Egypt, the pyramids had been standing for over 2,000 years. Many of them were already heavily looted, and most of the treasure was long gone. The Great Pyramid itself was sealed, and it is highly unlikely the Romans had the technology to break in without leaving evidence of their intrusion. Yet stories of Roman treasure hunters guided by ancient maps and legends seeking the secrets of the pyramids persist. Could there have been rogue Roman officials or adventurous explorers who attempted to find hidden chambers and undiscovered loot? The notion is romantic, albeit historically tenuous. In truth, the Romans probably treated the pyramids with the same curiosity and awe as we do. They were relics of a bygone era, timeless monuments that represented a civilization that was ancient even in their time. Rather than the ransacking conquerors some may envision, the Romans may have been the first tourists gazing upon the wonders of a fallen empire. The line between treasure hunter and archaeologist can be a blurry one. Did Romans ransack the pyramids in search of hidden wealth, or were they preservationists attempting to safeguard and understand these impressive structures? Let's dive deeper. We have records of Roman emperors such as Augustus and Hadrian visiting Egypt and expressing a great interest in its antiquities. In fact, many Roman leaders funded expeditions to explore and document Egypt's monuments. They brought back a wealth of knowledge about Egyptian culture, language and history. So it's clear the Romans held a fascination for Egypt's past, but did this translate into a respect for its physical artifacts? Unfortunately, the answer is not straightforward. While some Roman officials genuinely sought to understand and preserve Egypt's heritage, others saw the ancient monuments as resources to be exploited. For example, there's evidence of stone from the pyramids being quarried for other building projects. The situation gets even murkier when we consider the concept of treasure hunting. The phrase conjures images of rogue explorers plundering tombs and temples for gold and jewels. But in the context of the Roman period, treasure could also refer to knowledge, historical artifacts or even mystical power. Pyramids with their ancient hidden chambers could hold untold secrets in the Roman imagination. In a strange twist of fate, the Roman obsession with Egypt might have inadvertently led to some preservation. Many Egyptian artifacts found their way to Rome effectively being saved from the ravages of time and later, more destructive conquerors. So the Romans' relationship with the pyramids and Egypt's treasures was complicated, to say the least. A mix of reverence, curiosity, greed and pragmatism that has left us with a wealth of questions and a rich, albeit confounding, historical legacy. The Roman period was a pivotal chapter in the long, complex story of Egypt. How the Romans interacted with the pyramids, the Sphinx, and other Egyptian antiquities has significantly shaped our understanding of these iconic structures. For one thing, Romans played a key role in the spread of Egyptomania, the fascination with all things Egyptian. This phenomenon was popular in Rome even before Egypt was annexed as a province. Statues, obelisks, and other Egyptian antiquities were transported to Rome to decorate public buildings and private villas, and the Roman aristocracy even had a fad for Egyptian-style garden ornaments. But Rome's influence went beyond simply popularizing Egyptian style. Roman engineers, architects and scholars also studied and documented Egyptian monuments in great detail. The records they left behind have been invaluable for modern Egyptologists, providing insight into the state of these structures in antiquity. Another Roman contribution was the preservation of Egypt's built heritage, albeit indirectly. By incorporating Egypt into their empire, the Romans brought relative stability and prosperity to the region, allowing for the maintenance and repair of ancient monuments. While there were cases of Romans quarrying stone from the pyramids for their own construction projects on the whole, these monuments were largely respected and preserved during the Roman period. However, the Romans also unwittingly contributed to some destruction. 
The trade in Egyptian antiquities, coupled with the frequent treasure hunts, led to the loss and damage of many artifacts and structures. Overall, the Romans left an indelible mark on Egypt and its ancient heritage. Their influence is evident in everything from the physical state of the pyramids to our contemporary fascination with this civilization. The story of the Romans and the pyramids is a complex tapestry, woven from threads of curiosity, respect, exploitation and ultimately preservation. It's a testament to the enduring allure of Egypt's past and a reminder of how our understanding of history is shaped not only by the events of antiquity, but by those who have studied it in the centuries since. Do you ever wonder how much truth lies beneath the tales of old? Ancient myths and legends filled with gods, heroes and fantastical beasts often seem too extraordinary to hold any factual basis. Yet there are instances where archaeology, history and science have unveiled truths hidden within these tales. Yes, some ancient myths have a kernel of reality within their layers of symbolism and metaphor. Today, we are going to delve into seven fascinating cases where myth intertwines with history, where the lines between fact and fiction blur, and ancient stories reveal their true colors. The city of Troy, famous in Homer's Iliad, was once considered purely fictional, a tale to fascinate listeners and readers. The city was described as grand, filled with mighty warriors and noble kings, and the setting for the legendary Trojan War. The Greek hero Achilles, the Trojan Prince Hector, and the beautiful Helen. They were all characters in this drama, but could it be that these characters were not just part of an epic poem, but people who once lived and breathed? In the 19th century, archaeologist Heinrich Schliemann became fascinated with the idea that the Homeric legends had a basis in historical fact. Rather than dismissing the Iliad as mere fiction, Schliemann used it as a map. He followed the detailed descriptions and geographical clues that Homer had left in his text. His obsession brought him to Hisalik, a site in modern-day Turkey. In Hisalik, Schliemann began to dig. His excavations revealed a multi-layered city, one that had been built and rebuilt over the centuries. Artifacts dating back to the Bronze Age were found and the layout of the city matched that described in Homer's epic. The walls of the city, the gates, the placement of buildings, it all pointed to one conclusion. This was the site of the ancient city of Troy, Critics questioned Schliemann's methods and interpretations. They argued that his desire to find Troy may have led him to see what he wanted to see, but subsequent excavations by other archaeologists have supported Schliemann's claim. While it's challenging to prove that the Trojan War, as described by Homer, actually occurred, there's no longer any doubt that a city existed at Hisalik, a city that fits the description and timeline of Homer's Troy. Let's step into the ancient city of Babylon, one of the most famous cities of the ancient world and home to one of the seven wonders, the Hanging Gardens. This marvel is wrapped in an enigmatic aura, largely because despite numerous historical accounts of its existence, no physical evidence of the gardens has ever been found. But wait, how can something so grand, so monumental, simply vanish without a trace? The Hanging Gardens were said to be an architectural masterpiece, a testament to human ingenuity and a challenge to Mother Nature herself. They were purportedly built by King Nebuchadnezzar II around 600 BC for his wife Amitis, who was homesick for the lush green landscapes of her homeland media. It's like if you can't go to the mountain, bring the mountain to you. But this mountain was a little more than a mound of earth. This was a spectacular terrace garden filled with exotic plants and trees, adorned with intricate irrigation systems. Historians believe that the gardens were tiered, much like a ziggurat, with each level teeming with a diverse array of flora. The plants were not rooted in the earth directly, but in a roofed area where a complex irrigation system fed water from the Euphrates River. This marvel of engineering, essentially a primitive form of hydroponics, is a testament to the advanced understanding of engineering and horticulture by the Babylonians. The Hanging Gardens must have been a sight to behold. Imagine a city in the desert, its arid, beige landscape broken by a towering structure teeming with greenery. A beacon of life and color cascading down in tears, a spectacle of nature suspended in the air. It was a marvel that, even in the absence of physical evidence, has left an indelible mark on the annals of human civilization. However, recent research has suggested that the Hanging Gardens may not have been located in Babylon at all. Dr. Stephanie Daly, an Assyriologist from the University of Oxford posits that the gardens were actually located in the Assyrian city of Nineveh.
She bases her theory on a retranslation of ancient texts and points out that Babylon was often used in texts to refer generically to any area of Mesopotamia. Ah, King Midas, a character from ancient Greek mythology known far and wide for his ability to turn everything he touched into gold, aptly named the Golden Touch. This might sound like a superpower to most, but as the tale unfolds, we learn that it's not all it's cracked up to be. But where does this story come from and how does it stand up to the facts? King Midas was a historical figure, a Phrygian king who reigned in the 8th century BC. The ancient Greeks believed he was the son of Gordaeus and Cybele, the goddess of fertility. So far, so historical, right? But here's where it gets a little golden. According to legend, Midas helped the drunken Silenus, a companion of the god Dionysus, back home. In gratitude, Dionysus offered to grant Midas a single wish. Overwhelmed with greed, Midas wished for everything he touched to turn into gold. At first, Midas was overjoyed. The ability to generate infinite wealth with a simple touch seemed like a dream come true. But the dream rapidly turned into a nightmare. When he attempted to eat, his food turned into inedible gold. When he tried to drink, his water transformed into molten gold. Even his beloved daughter, whom he accidentally touched, turned into a golden statue. His blessing was, in fact, a curse. Stricken with despair, he begged Dionysus to remove his golden touch. The god agreed, instructing Midas to wash in the river Pactolus to reverse the enchantment. But here's where the story takes a fascinating turn. The river Pactolus, located in what is now modern Turkey, was renowned in ancient times for its rich deposits of gold. Even today, gold dust can be found in its waters. Was this the result of some geological phenomenon? Or could it be that there's some truth to the myth of King Midas after all? What's more, archaeological evidence suggests that the Kingdom of Phrygia was known for its wealth and craft in working with gold. The Midas Mound burial site in Gordian Turkey, named for the legendary king, contained a wealth of golden artifacts when it was excavated in the 1950s. The concept of a cataclysmic flood that wipes out most of life on Earth is a common thread in many ancient cultures, leading us to wonder could this possibly be grounded in some historical reality? We have the biblical account of Noah's Ark, but there are also similar tales from the ancient Sumerians, Greeks, Hindus, Chinese and Native Americans among others. Even in an era before global communication, this story seems to have been replicated in cultures thousands of miles apart. So could these flood myths be more than just stories? In the Epic of Gilgamesh, one of the oldest known works of literature dating back to ancient Sumeria, we encounter the story of Utnapishtim. Utnapishtim was warned by the god Enki of a coming flood and instructed to build a boat to save himself, his family and all the animals. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? The parallels between this story and the biblical account of Noah are uncanny. In Greece, we have the myth of Deucalion and Pyrrha, who were the only survivors of a great deluge sent by an angry Zeus. In Hindu mythology, there's the story of Manu who builds a boat to survive a flood that engulfs the earth. These stories, despite originating from different cultures and time periods, share a remarkable similarity. It's easy to dismiss these tales as coincidental or symbolic, but geological evidence suggests that large-scale flooding did occur in various parts of the world at different times. For instance, around 5600 BC, a catastrophic event known as the Black Sea Deluge may have flooded a vast area of land. Another fascinating theory revolves around the end of the last ice age, around 10,000 BC, when melting ice caps would have caused sea levels to rise significantly, potentially submerging coastal civilizations and giving rise to flood legends. In North America, there's evidence of the Missoula floods, a series of cataclysmic floods that occurred between 15,000 and 13,000 years ago at the end of the last ice age. These floods, caused by the periodic rupturing of ice dams, were of such a scale that they dramatically altered the landscape of parts of Washington, Oregon and Idaho. So while we can't say for certain that any one of these flood myths is a direct account of these events, the geological evidence does suggest that our ancient ancestors had to deal with catastrophic floods. Their collective memory of these terrifying events may have been passed down through generations, slowly morphing into the flood myths we know today. The idea of a great flood, it seems, may not be entirely mythical after all. It's a fascinating testament to the way humans, across cultures and across time, make sense of the natural world and its sometimes catastrophic events. 
the ancient city of Hilak, often referred to as the real-life Atlantis, is a fascinating tale of an entire city that supposedly disappeared overnight. The city was an important center of the Achaean civilization, predating Athens and holding significant power and influence in the region. It was famed for its sanctuary of Poseidon, the god of the sea, earthquakes, and horses. The story goes that one fateful winter night in 373 BC, the city was obliterated. But this was no ordinary destruction. According to ancient texts, the city sank into a lagoon, disappearing beneath the waves in a single night, following a combination of a powerful earthquake and a subsequent tsunami. The city, its buildings and its inhabitants were lost beneath the sea, leaving no trace on the surface. The event was so catastrophic that it was said to have inspired the philosopher Plato's account of Atlantis. But was Helike just a myth? For centuries the story was treated as such, until modern archaeologists decided to investigate. In the late 20th century, a team led by Greek archaeologist Dora Katsanopoulou launched an expedition to find the lost city. After a lengthy search in 2001, they finally found something remarkable. Ruins submerged in a lagoon near the village of Rizomelos, including a large building with archaic walls, classical ceramic fragments, and even bronze artifacts, all dated back to when Helica was supposed to have existed. The findings suggested that the city had been struck by a massive earthquake which liquefied the ground, a process known as soil liquefaction. This, coupled with the tsunami that followed, would have swallowed up the city, much as the ancient texts described. Excavations are still ongoing, but every uncovered artifact adds credibility to a story once thought to be a myth. When we think of the Amazons, images of fierce, independent warrior women might spring to mind thanks to Greek mythology. These women were said to have lived apart from men, only interacting with them for procreation. They were described as equals to men in physical agility and courage, legendary for their skills in battle and their ruthlessness. But how much of this was myth and how much was reality? Ancient Greek historians such as Herodotus wrote detailed accounts of the Amazons, but for a long time these stories were treated as just that, stories. The idea of a society of warrior women living in a land beyond the realms of the known world seemed fantastical. But then, archaeology stepped in and offered us a different perspective. In the 1990s, a series of graves were uncovered in the Eurasian steppe, specifically in areas around modern-day Russia and Kazakhstan, which dramatically changed our understanding of the Amazons. The graves contained the remains of women buried with weapons, including arrows and spears, as well as horse-riding gear, equipment that mirrored what was described in the tales of the Amazons. Even more striking was the evidence of battle scars on the bones, including arrowheads lodged in the bodies, indicating that these women were not just buried with weapons for symbolic reasons, they were warriors who had actively participated in combat. These findings suggest that the myth of the Amazons might have been inspired by real warrior women from the Scythian culture, a nomadic group that inhabited these areas. This discovery has had a profound impact on how we interpret the myth of the Amazons. It suggests that the ancient Greeks may have had contact with these warrior women, either through trade or warfare, and their stories were then woven into the rich tapestry of Greek mythology. We've journeyed from the walls of Troy to the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, from the touch of King Midas to the shores of the lost city of Helag. We've seen how the myth of the fierce Amazon women held a reality. These instances show us that the boundary between myth and reality is not as rigid as we might think. Indeed, our understanding of the past is an ever-evolving tapestry of fact, interpretation and storytelling, it reminds us that within every myth, there may lie a grain of truth waiting to be uncovered. Until next time, remember, the world is full of mysteries and our quest for knowledge is never-ending. And as always, keep your mind open and keep questioning.